All right, everybody. It's Big Daddy. Another Big Daddy and Friends show is in the works and on the move. Well, I have to say, our guest today has been a friend of mine for many years, and I've seen uh, him grow, and I've seen him do his thing, and now I see him doing his thing all over the place. So it's like you can't get enough of uh, our guest. My friend Steve Weish, welcome to Big Daddy and Friends. Big Daddy, thanks so much for having me. I appreciate you bringing me on. I mean, I know I'm like, you know, number 87 on the pecking order. I see you stacking Andy Reid and all these guys here. So I'm just so glad. I'm so glad to be in the big, in big Daddy's house, man. This is great. Oh, of course, man. I mean, listen, you know, we were off air. We were talking about Mike Newsom. So him and I, <laughs> we speak almost every day. So we were chatting about – you know, how you meet guys and where you meet. And, 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 and one of the things that we do on the show, I explain to people how we met. So Mike and I were like, well, you know, how did you meet Steve Weiss? And I said, well, we met at an Atlanta Falcons game on, in the press box. You know, you're doing your thing. And uh, I forget, before you were at NFL Network. When I was you, at the paper there. Yeah, you were doing the paper there. And uh, – so, uh, you know, I said, yeah, I, I, the two guys that I always remember that I met in the Atlanta press box are Steve Weish and Jim Trotter. I said two and, and two good friends of mine, and, and we've known each other now many years. So it's like, you know, there's that, uh, there's the, uh, what do you call it, the, the hut. We were all in the hut at one time. Yeah. <laughs> we in a different direction, you know, so it's uh, – it's fun. But uh, I see you're wearing your Huddle and Flow shirt. Uh, yeah, tell, baby. Tell, our, you know, tell everybody a little bit about that. Yeah, you know, at the beginning of the season, um, Jim Trotter and I, you know, you, you just mentioned us, we're real good friends. We're both graduates of Howard University. And the network said, hey, look, you know, we know two years ago you guys pitched a podcast idea to us, which at the time, as a side note, we were laughed out of the room. Um but they kind of they came to us and said, look, we want to revisit that. We're going to revisit our podcast platform. We know during COVID, a lot of people are home. They got free time, whatever. We think this podcasting could could really blow up, kind of like how you're doing, Big Daddy. Mm -hmm. And so um, Jim and I started this, and you know, it was a podcast that we don't sit down like a lot of podcasts and just talk to each other about sports or events or what's going on that day. We're interviewers. We're reporters. So we get guests on. And you know, we're two really good interviewers. I mean, I'm not going to be bashful about saying that we really get people to feel comfortable and divulge a lot. And so we decided to make this a show where we get people on, interview them. We'll have a baseline of topics, usually ranging from football. But we've had a great journalist on like, you know, Soledad O'Brien or Jamel Hill and Kerry Champion. Or, you know, just we've had a lot of just people from different worlds. Chuck D, a public enemy. And we just we talk, man. We really we hit a lot of issues, a lot of social justice issues, but a lot of issues that have nothing to do really with any. We had your buddy Todd Bowles on, the defensive coordinator for the Buccaneers, on our most recent podcast. Man, he's telling us when he used to be a security guard at a freaking juvenile Master P concert, and and Big Daddy is some of the best content we've ever had because it was hilarious. I mean, I was literally crying listening to him talk about it. <laughs> well, that's, that's the thing that we've been doing on here because, you know, you guys do a great job with what you guys do and get everything, every little bit out of everyone and, and give out information that, you know, most uh, people would not know. You know, it's so uh, when Andy Reid and I did our interview, we were talking about his macaroni and cheese uh, recipe, you know, things along and then how we met. And, and and so on and so on and so on and that's what I've been dealing. That's what I've been uh, conversing with all the guests. I want to know something different, you know. I want to know something that someone else doesn't know, and uh, and let the fans understand and learn a little bit more than you're just Steve Weiss NFL Network or you know right. Trotter or you're Andy Reid or so on and so on. Let people know a little bit. Uh, go inside you, you know, like. Learn something different because that's what intrigues people. I think when you have uh, the same comment repeated by eight different outlets, then it's like, ugh, I already, you know, Steve Walsh already told me this. Why do I need this one, this one, this one, this one, this one? Tell me the same thing. 
you know? So I think that's... Yeah, it's- yeah, it's a crowded space. I mean, the podcast space is a crowded space. Morning TV is a crowded space. I mean, so you have to really find your niche. And a lot of times what you do and I do, like you're talking about how we met, we can take a snapshot of something. Prime example, you talk about Andy Reid, right? Andy Reid, got his coaching career, part of it went through University of Missouri, right? I played football at University of Missouri for two years before I transferred to Howard. So we had that connection. We found it out years ago when I was doing a training camp bit with him. And you know, Andy, he's like this hilarious guy that nobody really understands like how just like funny this dude is. Yeah. So I, was like, Andy, I was like, so Andy, what was, you know, just give us a few bars of the BYU fight song. So he hits the BYU fight song. And then he hits me, all right, give me, Steve, give me a few bars of the Howard fight song. And I was stumped. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> because because Howard, Howard, Howard's school song, is it's a hymn. It's like a religious hymn. So here's Andy singing, you know, fight tigers. And I'm like, and it was it was brilliant TV, but it was a moment like that that now we can capture on podcasts. And, and like you said, it's a thread of of what of relationships we have where we can we can show a lot of whatever, what people don't know, the humanity of people. And, and I think I think it's just great having this platform, you know, as you're learning. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm learning a lot. I'll tell you one thing. I'm learning it's some work because you know it's it's funny when <laughs> you know you start looking into people and researching and and I'm like, okay, it's me and it's just me. So I'm gonna do the booking, the producing, and, <laughs> and the interviewing. Uh, and I, don't get me wrong, I do get help with this. So uh, and and some outstanding help, but a lot of times it's you know the producers or bookers really can't go and say to me tell me about steve or, or, they're going to tell me about you when i already know you for 20 years you know what i mean so it's not so that's always the uh the indifference you know the whole different uh one aspect is different than the other aspect and a lot of times like i, I don't need that because i know who i'm speaking to you know what i mean it's uh and, right. just, and just like you do you do you know jim does too I mean, and I check you guys out on Twitter all the time, so I know it. And <laughs> and obviously, you know, with my brother Jimmy being a coach uh, with the Buffalo Bills, uh, and, you know, I know the minority thing comes up, and us being Hispanic, you know, that always hits home, close home to him more than it does me because, you know, uh, his mentor and, like, I, I, I think this guy, I don't know why he's not a head coach, is Leslie Frazier. I mean, right. he is on top of being one of the nicest guys in the world. I, I think when you have a guy like him that is turned around a team along with uh, Sean McDermott and had a top, what, two, three, top three or higher defense, something's done, something's being done right. And I think the wrong people are hiring people. Like, if you're a football guy, you should know that that's a football guy. Why wouldn't you? If I'm an owner, that's the guy I want. You know what I mean? But and you know we can go on and on for hours on that. Thing. Right. But it's like when you see and when you sit there and you watch, you're like, I just don't get it. Are the owners really? And I don't. I saw this quote: Are the owners really paying attention when they're interviewing candidates? Well, you know that's a, that's a great question because you know different owners have different input, right? Like someone like Arthur Blank with the Falcons, he's in it, right? Arthur is, you know, he's mm-hmm. someone who built Home Depot from the ground up. And in his book, Good Company, which is a fantastic book. I don't know if you've read it. Um, you know, he's, company, it's called? The Company? Good good Company. Good company but, he, okay. but he talks about his philosophy where, you know, when the, the owners, you know, him and Bernie Marcus, who started Home Depot, they would go work the floor. Like everybody would have to work the floor certain times during the year so they could, one, make their employees feel that they're all part of the same team. Two, they can get the the feedback and, the, and just how, how customers behave, right? Arthur always refers to, fans, refers to fans as shareholders. So he's really involved in the interview process. He wants to know a lot. He's very micro. Where you have some other owners who are like, yeah, I don't know anything about football. I'm not going to pretend like I do, so I'm going to leave it into the hands of other people. Well, as we're seeing, such as like in Houston, the hands of the other people don't want anybody to come in who could be a threat to them, yeah. who could possibly supersede their power. We know Leslie interviewed down there, and Big Daddy, Leslie's interviewed for jobs for years. 
And every time you hear like, oh, my God, Leslie Frazier is one of the most impressive interviews. So why didn't you hire him? And then we hear Eric Bieniemy. Some, someone said, oh, well, well, he's not a great interview. So you didn't hire him. So what is it, man? Okay, not a good interview, great interview, but yeah, the tape speaks, the record speaks, the success speaks, the experience speaks. What is the deal? What do you want? And that's the big frustration about diverse candidates because the goalposts are constantly moving. It's like, okay, to get an A on this test, I thought I had to study, really work hard, get repetitions, and, and bang out a bunch of A's before I took it so I know I'm ready. But now you're telling me, I've got to also solve 15 word problems to get the A on this test. Oh, but that guy didn't. So that's how come there's so much frustration. I've never sensed it um, among, you know, candidates of color and coach, you know, assistant coaches like I have this year. I mean, this is, this is next level. And I'm sure Leslie is right there as well. Yeah. I don't, uh, like I said, we'd need to do about 10 shows uh, to even come <laughs> for to answer and I don't even know if there is an answer that you can answer, but we just don't know it, or you can't publicly give that answer out. It's not even that. Here, here's the thing, Big Daddy. A lot of, you know, I, I, I answer this question a lot because Jim and I bang on it. I, I, I speak on it a lot. It's very important to me. Mm-hmm. I'm not the one doing the hiring. The mm-hmm. people who need to be answering the questions are the people who are going to be signing the paychecks. Would they dare? Would they dare step in front of a camera or come on a podcast? And say, well, yeah, I tell you, listen to this podcast with Todd Bowles. He talks about his interviews this year. He he yeah. he takes us in he takes us in the interview room. And not only for him is it, you know, being a diverse candidate, it's a, being a defensive coach. And some of the stuff I've heard from him and other defensive candidates, like Leslie, I haven't talked to Leslie about this, but other defensive coaches, some of these owners and, and people doing the hiring, they couldn't get off of the offensive aspect. These guys are like 15 minutes into the interview. I knew I had no shot because all they wanted to do is talk about offense. How are you going to do this? How are you going to do that? It's like this team wants nothing to do with me. They brought me in to humor me. And, and that's really how they felt when they finished. Yeah, well, that's a shame because there's so many qualified candidates that would probably have uh, – would do great jobs and they would probably outlast a two- or three-year run when you're getting these guys that someone's enamored with and all of a sudden, you know, and without naming names, uh, you know, you got guys that get hired and all of a sudden they're gone. They're done. And all oh, this guy was supposed to be oh, from this tree or this guy or that. And it ain't working. So somebody's doing something. It's the same teams too, man. Same yeah. teams. Yeah. And then we'll move on. We can move on. Let's <laughs> So we can move on. I thought you were getting ready to change. No, no, I, know, I, know. I, was, I was getting hung up on this. You got me worked up, Big Daddy. I know, but you know what? It's good to because that's what people want to hear. You don't hear all this stuff because everyone's so afraid to say something. Or and, and people that are watching and listening are like, wow, I'm hearing it from Steve Weish. So it's different than you're hearing it from Big Daddy because you're the inside guy. I'm just an insurance guy on the outside that gets to hang out with all you big timers. You know, yeah, so. just an insurance guy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you sent me my official sweatshirt, so uh, you can only imagine what I'm thinking. But uh, uh, and I got Steve Spagnola coming on my show as well too. So Steve and I, obviously, we've been close friends since his days at the Giants, and his wife Maria, are great. So, um, so anyway, another another guy who should get another shot. By yeah, the way, we, we, talk, we talked about it in the interview. Who? Uh, he actually, you know, I'll give a little bit. He says he's he would love another shot, but he's got the greatest job in the world, and he's on a great team with a great organization. You know, that's the other thing. But everyone wants to be their own shot caller, so I get that, and I hope he gets a shot. You know, he deserves it. And you know what? There's guys Steve, that – You know Steve is super PC, man. That guy does not have a mean bone in his body, so he's always going to always going to take the high road, but I'll speak for him. He's someone else who should get another shot. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So you're down in Tampa now, huh? I'm here. This is my beautiful hotel room, as you can see. Uh, I mean, I'm sure if you do anybody else down here, they're going to have the same background as me. Yeah, you're the third third one. So uh, (laughs) it's funny. I uh, I, the Super Bowl must be different, man, because it's no one's down there. You know, it's. The Chiefs get in on Saturday like a regular game, and then they fly right out after the game. There's no, 
you know, I told Andy, we're not going to be dancing with uh, Pitbull this year like last year at the victory party because uh, there is no party. He's like, yeah, yeah, it's different world. Different world. It really is different because Big Daddy, you know, the whole week leading up to the Super Bowl, especially once you kind of get to like Wednesday, there are 20 big parties. You're, you're having Snoop. Like you said, you're having Pitbull. You're having all these big artists come in and throw parties. Jamie Foxx, all these folks throw parties. People come in to go to, you know, go to these parties. There are huge dinners and all these galas and everything constant, all these big fan experiences. It, it's amazing. Um, you know, I posted on my Instagram a shot of Radio Row. First off, there's like 30 tables in this massive con- convention center hall, and there's like three radio stations there. It, it's there's not many people here. I'm sure as we get closer, there'll be some people coming down. Yeah. But it's I mean, the fact that there's just no events um really taking place and if they are taking place or done in such a way like this like we're doing via zoom or so socially distance it's odd but i do give the nfl the nfl pa the players the coaches and their families so much credit for doing what they had to do to get here yeah some games were were rescheduled yeah, the Denver Broncos had to play a practice squad wide receiver at quarterback because of COVID, mm-hmm. but they got all the games in, um, and it's been an exciting, exciting season. We've seen some of the greatest performances we've seen, um, some incredible storylines, but the fact that everyone kind of buckled down and did what they had to do to get us here, I, I mean, hats off, yeah. especially to the especially to the players and, and the coaches and their families. I mean, imagine these guys going home and they, they may have children or – even teenage children who are who are going out or whatever, you know, and the discipline that they had to show not to infect, you know, whoever was affiliated with the football team, so they're not bringing into their facility. It's 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 amazing. Yeah, no, it's uh, everyone should be saluted and patted on the back. I'll tell you, like you know, it's when you you know with hockey and basketball, you know, the numbers are smaller, but when you think about it, I was saying you got fifty five players, right, or fifty three. Then you have the staffs. Then you have the ancillary staff. And then you have, oh, that is something to manage. I mean, you're like, you know, you're being gatekeeper, you know, to mm-hmm. 50 people when you're on an away game. I, I know it's about 125, 150 people are on a plane. You know, think about all that. And then I know the, I know that the, the testing, my, my brother, when he goes to work every day, Every morning has to be tested. Even though the season's over, they're still being tested. Yeah. No, he's going every morning. He goes to work out. He gets tested as soon as he works out. You know? And, well, I mean, yeah. and I'm sure he, I'm sure he's grateful for that. That's peace of mind, though. Yeah, no, he doesn't complain. He just says, he goes, you know what? It's just something added to the, uh, to the routine every day. You've got to do it. So, you know, so be it. And that's that. But, uh, is there a, the Saturday Night Awards dinner? Are they having that? What are they doing? Uh, is that live? Like, like like the NFL Honors? Yeah, the NFL Honors, yeah. So I think from everything I understand, that is being pre-recorded. I think parts of it will be live. Parts of it will be pre-recorded. But mm-hmm. it's not, you know, typically that's in a big auditorium. Like usually every city has got a big Fox theater or a big yeah, I went you know, Radio one. City Music. Mm-hmm. I remember. Yeah, and it, yeah not, not, not here. That's not going to happen this year. Yeah, there will be there will be an honor show where you know all the MVP and the Hall of Fame and all that stuff is announced, but it's it's no super spreader events being hosted by the NFL down here, Big Daddy. I hear it. Well, I ain't missing anything like that because you know I'm usually a, 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 I usually host a, a party for Saks Fifth Avenue on that Wednesday, and so obviously that's not happening. And then uh, and then being down there the whole week, and then I get to do my Super Bowl. Uh, uh, run around with a microphone and then go on Fox and Friends on Sunday and pick, you know, the winner for Sunday's game. I, it was funny. Last year, before I did this segment, one of the producers said to me, you know, Big Daddy, uh, if we roll the uh, past year's predictions, you haven't been that good. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> saying oh, man, talking about sweating me before I'm even going on, right? So, as you can see, I have the Rydell helmets behind me, and one of them is uh, the Super Bowl. The other one's Fox and Friends. Well, I had the team helmets from last year also sent to me. So I went on stage, you know, went on the set. We had the four helmets on. And I had told the producer, I said, listen, I'm going to go on a limb. 
the Chiefs are going to win. And they're like, Big Daddy, you are picking a loser again. I go, no, 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 no. Trust me, they're going to win. All right. So I go on. I do the segment. And, of course, I say, that, give me the helmet. The Chiefs are going to win, blah, blah, blah. And, obviously, I gave my reasons. Well, Andy Reid, Spags, you know, um, Ted Cruz. I mean, I can go on. <laughs> <laughs> Ted Cruz, the head of their, the head of their media relations. Yeah, that's right. hey, put him over the top. You got to give my brother some love. You know why? That's my I, dude, too. My brother Jimmy goes like this to me, and I told Teddy this. My brother Jimmy goes, man, you know, I'll tell you one thing. Every time I see Ted Cruz, he is dressed to the nines, right? He looks younger, doesn't he? Yeah, and I told my brother, I go, well, listen, he's on TV more than Mahomes and Andy, so he's got to look good, you know? And uh, he started laughing. So uh, I said, and that was my reason for picking the Chiefs last year. I put the helmet up there. I said, they're going to win. So this year, I even, I'll go even further. I think they're going to win, and – I'm wearing the shirt, and on Sunday I'll have the helmets and everything, and go Chiefs. You have got to give us somebody else, okay? So you've got Andy Spags, Ted Cruz. Who is who is the fourth option? Who who is the new option who probably will never take a snap? Look, <laughs> <laughs> Dave Merritt. You know why? Because Dave he's, Merritt. He's I got, like that. David's got three rings already, so now he needs the fourth. You know, so he's got two with the Giants. He got one last year with KC. He's got to get another one now with, to get to get for four, you know. So oh, that's, that's my, here's my fourth option. My fourth option. So, okay, here's the fun part of the show. Even though we've had fun the whole time, and uh, this is where I allow you to now do your job the way you normally do and have me on as a guest. So, as oh, for, hey, Daddy, I'm nervous. Okay. okay, so anybody who follows your IG or whatever sees you on the treadmill with your shield on and everything, getting your workouts in every morning, right? Yep. How high do you take the incline, and how fast do you take the speed? Okay, here's what happens is when, when I first started doing this thing, I was on the elliptical, and uh, I started with 15 minutes. I ended up going up to an hour a day, Great. okay? Great. And I started doing – uh. Levels two, four. I was going up to level 10. Yes. I never had thought in my mind or my life that I'd ever be able to do that. So then I ended up having a conversation with uh, a friend of mine. It's funny. If you saw this guy, his name's Augie. He owns a bakery here in New York and Long Island. It's called Cardinale Bakery. But if you saw the guy, he looks like the Hulk. He's huge, no body jacked. jacked up. Well, he said to me, he goes, Big Dad, if you want to take your game to another level, obviously the diet is the most important thing, but get on the stair mill, you know, because the stair mill, if you don't walk, you fall off it. The elliptical, you can just stop, and or the treadmill, you can jump off, or the bike, you can hop off. The stair mill, you got to keep going. So, all right, let me try that. So I've been doing that now uh, five to six days a week for a half hour, and I've been taking it all the way up to level nine now. So you're grinding, Big Daddy. That's a great workout, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm, and I do that before I do any weights because even though they say do it the other way, which I started to, I'm like, man, if I'm going to put everything into this, I want to get this out of the way. And, and and knock it out, and, and I feel like a million dollars when I get off it, then the weight part, look, I'm not a football player anymore, so I'm just trying to stay, keep my heart rate up and active, and, you know, look, I survived an aneurysm, and knock on wood, I'm alive, and everything's great. I'm down almost 70 pounds since the last... Look at you, because you... Yeah, I mean, look, I'm looking at you right now, and I'm looking at your face, and everything. You, you look like you've lost a bunch of weight. I, I absolutely salute that, and you've got the same kind of workout pattern I am. I used to be the guy, like, all right... I'm going to go, you know, throw around the iron, rah, rah, rah. Yeah. And then I'm going to do, you know, 40 on the elliptical because they were like, okay, you lift, you build up your mass, and you get on the elliptical or treadmill, whatever, and then you burn off whatever's left. Well, you know, I tended not to have enough gas left, so to speak, to finish, you know, the, the cardio stuff. So now I get on, I'm like 45 minutes, at least warm-up cardio. I got like the Wicked playlist going with all my stuff. Yeah. And then – and, you know, I'm not, I don't lift heavy anymore. I just, you know, lift to look good in a suit. 
Yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, the funniest thing is I don't even use a headset. It's so funny. My friend who works out with me says, I don't know how you do it. I said, well, I, I, I don't know how you do it, bro. I don't either. But you know what it is? I do it and I start thinking about things I need to do for the day. Uh, I'll daydream. I'll do whatever it is to like get me through that 35 minutes. And then I'm like, all right, now it takes me five minutes to wipe off the machine because you think it, the machine got a shower from me sweating. <laughs> and uh, and that's what I do. I get the cardio in first. And then I uh, – but like I said, I changed it now to – let me let me shock my body because I, I shocked it when I went from the elliptical to the stair mill. Now the stair mill is moving along. Now, all right, let's see. Maybe I'll do weights now first. And if I see it affect my stair mill part – I'm going back to the stair mill because I think having my heart being better and pumping more, I think I get more out of that than I do the weights. Look, I'm big regardless, so it's I'm not worried about looking like Lou Ferrigno. I just want to live long and be healthy. And, uh, you know, my suits now, they were single-breasted. Now that I've dropped all this weight, I got to take them all in because they look like they're double-breasted. You're getting them tapered. Hey, I got a follow-up for that. Have you ever done a thing called Jacob's Ladder? Is that the wood one where you? It's the wood one. It's like a fireman you know, training disease. They don't have that, but I've seen it. I, I would Bro, love to try that. That that is it. Like you know, I when I get on there, a lot of times I've I've tapered down a lot uh, during the pandemic. But you know, when I get on that thing, I mean, it just takes like 12, 15 minutes, and it's you're yeah. done. I get about, I'm, I, I'd be worried about getting through five minutes just to see. Bro, it took me, I started it because I was scared. But like, okay. Then not kind of once you get used to it. But that that is like the greatest thing ever. I think I saw that in a gym in Atlanta at the uh, in one of the gyms I was working out at. Because even I got so addicted to this, even when I was traveling, I went down to visit Noose. And I went to a gym. And, and I'm like, yeah, I got to make sure I stay with this thing even when I'm on the road. Because it's in my head now. I got a part of my mm-hmm. mental psyche, and and uh, and you know what? It's when friends of yours tell you, and you, you know, I don't know if you know, I had coronavirus in March. And, I didn't uh, know. Yeah, I had it. I was wow, about, at the very beginning of it. At the very yeah, beginning, right after combine, when uh, you know, late February, early March. All of a sudden, I a friend of mine said to me, um, "Man, you sound like you're sucking wind." And I said, "Yeah, I go. I'm a little congested." Make long story short, I ended up in the hospital for three days. Uh, oh, man. But then I got out, and it took me about five weeks. And that's really what started the whole diet process. And then I said, you know what? I lost 25 pounds on corona diet virus. Uh, let me go, and let me just keep going. And that's what happened. That's And then knock on wood, everything's good. And uh, I'm living a healthier lifestyle and uh, trying to stay on the planet a little bit longer and you know, doing uh, this, that, and everything. I got a, I got an announcement that's going to be coming out soon. I, I have Big Daddy's Grill and Bacon line coming out. Uh, I'm uh, partnered up with a big uh, pork company, and some guy got a crazy idea to put my mug on the uh, the wrapper, and we're going to call it Big Daddy's <laughs> Grilling Bacon. So you'll get your packet. I'll, uh, Bro, I'll be hey, open right there for you. You're about, you're about to get yourself in trouble because, okay, I hope I'm not going to get you in trouble. Hopefully you can edit this if I say something wrong. But if all of a sudden you come out with like this big pork sausage, right? It says Big Daddy's and it has your name on it. People are going to be like, Big Daddy? Is that you? <laughs> I'm just following the game plan. I have the name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to be uh to story that'll be the next story coming out but uh I love it man I'm just so happy for you bro I I, I love everything I hear and you just told me you know you're you're an inspiration to so many people like us because your hustle game is real you know some of the things you've had to battle through are real I mean big daddy I'm just keeping it honest with you man you are a friend to everybody um we're always here for you bro and and I you know the fact that you had me on your show I'm humbled. And, and again, I just, I, I appreciate you, but I know I'm one in, in, a, in a world of 10 million that appreciates everything you do for so many people, man. Well, that is probably one of the kindest things I've ever heard. Thank you. 
And, you know, uh, the feeling, I feel the same way about you. And we know each other a long time. I love you. And I appreciate you coming on here, man. And and keep doing what you're doing, man, because you are just kicking ass. And uh, and tell your wingman, Mr. Trotter, you know what? He comes out for my golf outing. You need to come out with him. I don't, I don't play. I'll watch. I, like, I, I'm... Listen, ask Jim. Just tell him to tell you about my golf outing. So I'm sure it's great. I'm extending an invite right now, and I expect to see you there. I appreciate you, brother. Just let me know what it is. I don't golf either. You can hang out with me. You know what? The big joke is me and Brian Billick. Brian goes like this to me. He goes, Big Daddy, I'm the only Super Bowl winning coach that doesn't play golf, but make sure that all the golfers have drinks in their hands because he drives the beer cart. <laughs> it's like, I, I like – but does, there, is there anybody out there who, who looks like he plays golf more than Billick? I mean, he looks like you're pro yeah, typical. Like, yeah, I mean, 6'5", you know, yeah, yeah. dressed all the time. He's got the, uh, he's got the uh, what do you call it, the safari hat on. And he's got the <laughs> khakis. On. He looks like he's coaching, right? And all he's doing is, Big Daddy, I'll just drive the beer cart. Don't worry about it. I was, I'm riding. I'm riding shotgun, man. All right. Well, you got it. And oh, <laughs> more importantly, before we go, who do you got this week? What do you think? I, I I got the team that you're rocking with too, KC Chiefs. I I like the Chiefs, and you know it's a storyline that no one's talking about. I think their defense. Um, you know they're just so opportunistic. Yes, you can run on them. You know, typical Spags defense in between the twenties. But I, I just think they're gonna they're gonna do some things that are gonna make Tom uncomfortable. And, you know, and I don't think the Bucs are going to be able to run the ball on. I mean, you know, Fournette and Jones, that's kind of the unwritten story going into the Super Bowl, talking about the Bucs offense. I don't think Kansas City, when they get down where it matters, that the Bucs are going to be able to pound them. I, I just think the Chiefs defense is going to be the difference in this one. I, I Big Daddy, I'm actually taking somebody on the field and not Ted Cruz is my rationale for them winning this ball game. <laughs> Hey, well, when you see him, you got to tell him we were wrapping up about Oh, him. my God. I'm going to call him when we're done. Yeah, yeah, tell him. He's, him and Chad Steele of the Ravens are the two sharpest-dressed guys in the NFL. But when it comes to television exposure, it's Chad and yeah. then it's everyone else. And, yeah. I mean, that gap is cavernous. That is a Grand Canyon <laughs> gap. <laughs> I, 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 when I introduced my brother to Chad – I go, I, I, I was like, I want you to meet the sharpest dressed PR guy and the next famous guy standing next to, oh, wait a minute, let me retract. He is as famous as Tom Brady because Brady, every time he's up on the podium, Chad Steele's right there. So I'm like, if Brady's in the Super Bowl, don't worry, you're going to see Chad without, without, without Mr. B. Chad, Chad's got his own wing at NFL Films, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we gotta make sure he watches this. So I gotta have to. I gotta call him and let him know. But uh, let him, Steve. Again, thank you so much for being on. This is awesome. I uh, th- I can't wait to share this with everybody, and uh, I'll let you know when it comes out so we can all retweet it and whatnot. And uh, have fun down in Tampa. Be safe. I love you. Thank you again for everything. I appreciate it. And. Uh, To all the viewers and listeners, make sure you check out Steve Weish on NFL Network. He's on Twitter. He's all over the place, and he's got his own podcast along with Jim Trotter, Huddle and Flow. Check him out. Until next time, we'll see everybody soon. And, uh, Steve, take care of yourself, pal. Appreciate you, brother. Thanks for having me.